The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, as we continue in our worship of you on this day, we thank you for this time that we have to come together to to talk and to listen to each other. Continue to inspire us as we work to think about and to find ways to gather and to come together in this community where we can draw closer to each other and most of all closer to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, if you... Um, thank you for coming down and being part of this this morning, this, this series of Invoke 30 where we're spending some time uh, continuing to talk about um, a community, a Christian community, what it means. Um, and so I had... My, my plan for this had been to, um, to, to, to talk about some things that are a little uh, more that I feel are foundational to that and some people who've had some, some pretty significant things to say about community in ways that they, that they have, have, have lived in community in some cases, and then also to provide some more practical ways of looking at some communities um, that are, are in existence and how, and how powerful those have been. So what you saw in the bulletin today is actually what we'll be talking about next Sunday. Um, but uh, So today I want to talk a little bit about um, uh, Benedictine spirituality. Uh, anybody familiar with the rule of Benedict or Benedictine spirituality? So if you, if you, if you, if you are, great. And if you're not, then, then, uh, then this will hopefully be a little bit of a taste of that and it might prompt you to want to take a little bit of a deeper look at it. But before we get to that... This has nothing to do with what we're talking about today, but I saw this yesterday and thought it was probably pretty, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty accurate as we move into this. Anytime we spring forward, I, I can always sense too in church on those Sundays, everybody's a little bit like, okay, you know, uh, the amens are a little bit softer. So, um, what uh, I, I don't. We're, the, the focus of today is, is on the, the, the work and the, the writing and the experiences of, of this woman who is a, um, a Benedictine nun uh, named Joan Chittister. Um, I have one of her books here with me. I think she has written 60 or 70 uh, books. She is uh, very popular as a, not only as a writer but as a speaker. Uh, she's been a little bit controversial in the Roman Catholic Church and some of her um, comments and some of her uh, pushing uh, the, 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 the envelope, so to speak, uh, about the role of women in the church. Um, but she is just revered by many as just a deeply spirit, not only a deeply spiritual person, but as someone who's been able to help um, make uh, the rule of Benedict um, um, applicable to people like you and me. In other words, you don't have to be, as she says, living a cloistered life or a monastic life as a, as a nun or as a monk to be able to live into this ancient rule that has helped to structure and to govern monastic life, but that it's very applicable to those of us who don't live that way. Um, so um, here's just a few things um, about her. Again, her order is the Benedictine Sisters of Erie, uh, Pennsylvania, and then she has um, a, um, a, a resource, a center that, that provides um, um, a different things about contemporary um, uh, spirituality. Um, the rule of Benedict, let me just read you something. This is, this is taken from one of my favorite books of hers. It's called Wisdom Distilled from the Daily, Living the Rule of St. Benedict Today. And this is part of what she says. The rule of Benedict has been a guide to the spiritual life for common people since the 6th century. Anything that has lasted that long and had that kind of impact in a throwaway society is certainly worthy of consideration. How do we account for a way of life that has lasted for over 1,500 years? And what, if anything, does it say to the spiritual life in our world today? Benedictine spirituality offers exactly what our times are lacking. Benedictine spirituality seeks to fill up the emptiness and heal the brokenness in which most of us live in ways that are sensible, humane, whole, and accessible to an overworked, overstimulated, overscheduled human race. So the, the, the rule, the, as, as you may know, um, there was a point in time where there were a group of, of primarily men at that, at that point in time who became known as the Desert Fathers who, who felt like that they needed to separate themselves to be able to draw clo from others to be able to draw closer to God. And so they literally went out as hermits in the desert and lived and built, you know, lived in caves or built little, you know, structures. 
but there then became a point where, where, where the, the, there was a desire to, to pull some of that back together and for them to gather in community. And so that was the origination. That's how the, 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 the rule of Benedict originated. It gave those who wanted to come together and to live in communities as a way to structure their life together as monks and as monks, and then later on as nuns. And so that has continued today, um, and there are different tenets of, 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 of Benedictine spirituality that, that define who they are. One of them is, one of them is hospitality. Um, I had that experience early on as I was discerning, beginning to discern a call, what I thought was a call to the priesthood, and some of my work, some of my work at the time um, involved traveling um, up in the northern part of Alabama, and there was a, a Roman Catholic uh, a monastery there. Um, and I had never really, even, I'd never been in a monastery before. Didn't didn't know much about one or what you what you did if you walked in the door. But I did. Walked in the door and said, "Can I talk to somebody?" And it's a, it was a Benedictine monastery, and because of their their um, uh, part of the rule of their life is hospitality, then anybody who comes into the door is to be treated as if they're Jesus. And so in about five minutes, there was a monk who came down, and we ended up establishing a relationship, and he became one of my spiritual mentors and directors. And so that was kind of my first exposure to Benedictine life and to what that part of Benedictine spirituality um, was about. So in this book, in which uh, Sister Joan talks about um, how it is that people like you and me can apply this rule of Benedict to our lives today, she goes through the various components of, 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 the, of, the, of the rule of Benedict. One of those, which is community, which she describes as being the basis of human relationships. And there's an entire chapter in which she talks about um, uh, community. So I'm going to just read one more thing for you, and then we're going to we'll talk more about Sister Joan. This is from the Rule of Benedict. This then is the good zeal which monastics must foster with fervent love, that they should each try to be the first to show respect to the other, supporting with the greatest patience one another's weaknesses of body or behavior, and earnestly competing in obedience to one another. No one is to pursue what is judged better for self, but instead what is judged better for someone else. And so that part, that is what undergirds the notion of, of community, um, you know, specifically for monastics to govern their life. But again, also, as Sister Joan points out, in ways that, that we who don't live that way uh, can as well. So... Um, we're gonna. Um, Jacqueline has a, a, a little a, a video for us that that will that uh, of Sister Joan and some things that she taught. Uh, just a, a reflection that she did on community that I want to share with you. By Joan Chittister, one of the great spiritual teachers of our times. A spirituality of community requires meaningful contact, a common vision, and the beating of a cosmic heart big enough to embrace all of life. The important thing to remember about community is that it involves a great deal more than simply bringing a group of people together. To be in community means that you will be there for others and they will equally be there for you. You will not be alone, either in your happiness or in your sorrow. You will be with people in community who share common goals, who have a common vision for life, who understand what it means to strive for those things with others of like mind and heart. Finally, community is community. It is not exclusivity. It seeks to bind hearts and minds together for the purpose of one great goal in life, so you see why we have religious communities, athletic communities, political communities, social community. It means that we are here to seek some same thing together and to be supported by one another as we go. Learn more at joanchittister.org. Copyright 2018 by Joan Chittister. 
So I wanted you to have a chance just to hear, um, hear her voice. And if you, if you want to hear more of either these types of reflections or hear some of the, the different talks that she has, um, has, it has given and is giving, there are plenty, plenty of them on, uh, on YouTube and in, in, in various other ways. So this is, um, I want to read something else to you. This is, comes from something that she um, uh, wrote called Why Community. And she says this, years ago when I was working with new members in the community, meaning her, her, um, uh, her community in, in Erie, Pennsylvania, there was always one session which I asked them individually and in turn why they went to prayer. The answers were always full of the piety that comes with newness and the theology that comes from the books. Because, someone would say, prayer is what leads us to perfection. That's why I go to prayer. And Sister Jones says, I'd shake my head, no, that's not why we go to prayer. They'd think a while, then someone else would try. We go to prayer to, to immerse ourselves in God. I'd shake my head, no, I'd say we're, we're always immersed in God, but that's not why we go to prayer. The brows would tighten around the table. I think we go to prayer to remember God, someone would say a bit more tentatively. I'd shake my head, no... Awareness is certainly a state we seek, but it's not why we go to prayer. And by this time, there were fewer quick answers. And finally, one of the brave ones would say, then why do we go to prayer? I'd smile. We go to prayer around here, I'd say, because the bell rings. (laughs) It took a moment or two of stunned silence, and then they got it. We go to prayer because the community sweeps us along on the days we're too tired to pray too distracted to pray, too overburdened to care, then the community becomes the vehicle of our spiritual lives. So I thought that was pretty good. Um, you know, in talking to this group of young, uh, young nuns about why it is that they, that they go to prayer. Um, so as you, as you, as you pro- hopefully if you've picked up by now, that, 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 that the rule of Benedict was written... Um, based on, again, people coming together and, on a, and, and to help people establish community and then be able to live together in community in a way that not only brought them as humans together, but then helped them to connect with God through, through, through each other. Sister Joan says that, you know, that community is a matter of, of, of what's in our hearts and in our minds. And it's not something, and I think I mentioned this in my sermon today, that's created by, by just a particular place, nor, is it, nor can it be destroyed by, by being apart. And I think this part, for me, this part is, is really, really critical right now. And it's part of what led me to want to help us to think about our life together here at St. Peter's. Um, and to, and to, and to focus, spend some time focusing on community because I think that you know we, we've had I think all of us have had some concern about about the distance that we've had to have um, over the last couple of years. It's now gradually being um, uh, you know we're able to, to to move away from that. But um, you know but 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 ha, ha, what what impact has has the has distance had on our sense of community? Not only in places like our church, but in, 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 other, in other places. And so I think that what, what you know, she says about that, that, that community is something that, that, if it's, that if it's a part of who you are, then it can't be destroyed um, just, by, uh, just by distance alone. Not just in, in, in Benedictine terms, being together in community is, is not something that means that life together is going to be perfect, but it's a lifeline, a way of helping us to get to what can be better. Um, you know, life together can be messy. Well, I think we all know that. Life together in families, life together in professional settings, life together in, in schools, and certainly life together in church um, can at times be, be a little bit messy. It can be a little bit complicated. We all come with different thoughts and ideas and opinions, and, 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 it's not, and, and, and community is not a place where we all have to be of the same, the same mind about everything, but a way to help us to think about how, it, how is it that together we can, we, can, we, can, we can become better for each other and draw closer to, uh, to God. We're in a community to learn from the other what we don't know and to supply for the other what they need. 
to do together what we cannot possibly do alone. Um, and I think that is so, again, for the, for, the, for, the, for the church and for the impact that the church has, any one of us can have an impact in certain ways. But what we can do together and the way in which we're able to do things together and represent each other and the other to, to each other is so, so very important. And it continues to help us not only in our spiritual lives, but as we develop emotionally um, and physically um, as well. Getting beyond ourselves, beyond ourselves to that gift of being able to give of ourselves to the other, um, and, 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 and which helps us then to, 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 to be more immersed in the presence of God. I mean, again, I just keep saying this because I, I keep sensing it and feeling it. You know, if, 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 if Kelly and I showed up on a Sunday morning and it was just Kelly and David, there would be a really big difference than there is if there's Kelly and David and all of you. You know, we're meant to be together. We're meant to be together in community and to immerse ourselves in the presence of God, but with, with the others. Not, not that there are not times when we need to be alone. When we need that time, as also mentioned in my sermon, to be uh, quiet and to help connect to God. But at the end of the day, we are wired, hardwired. And Bishop Tutu, Desmond Tutu, talks a lot about this, about we're hardwired to be relational. We're hardwired to be in relationships with others. And that's what gives us a sense of who we really are. Not only of belonging, but, but of support. Now, one of the things that didn't make it onto my announcement card this morning was the bowl of prayers that, that are at the front door that we had from Ash, Ash Wednesday and then last Sunday, and they're there again today. And if you haven't had a chance to pick up one of those slips of paper... You may remember, I invite you to do so, and you may remember that on there is a, is a name. Uh, you know, our, our names are on those slips of paper, and the, and the commitment is to, is, to, is to offer support through your prayers just by remembering someone over these 40 days of Lent. It's not a, it's, it may not feel like a real big deal, um, but just think about that, that somebody is praying for you for, 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 for a period of time by name. And that's what we do together in community. You've also, hopefully by now, and if you haven't, I'll continue until we all have some sense of it. You've, all, you've heard, hopefully by now, you've heard the term Ubuntu, Ubuntu, a South African term that, that, um, that Desmond Tutu, Bishop Tutu uses a lot that talks about how it is that, 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 that I see God, we see God in the other, and that that is the way that we're most fulfilled in our humanity, is by being able to see God. And this is also what Sister Joan talks about. Coming together in community is where we are able to, to, to see God be in the other, but also because of the other. Um, it, I love this phrase. It is, it, is, it is community that calls me beyond the pinched horizons of my own life. The pinched horizons of my own life. I mean, I don't know about you all, but how often you know, do, you, do, you, do you, I mean, I fall into that thing of, okay, you know, I got to get out of those pinched horizons and be more attuned to, you know, the needs and concerns of those, of those around me. It, it, it's just, it's, just na it's natural. It's, it's human, it's human nature. Um, and get, being in community helps us to get and to give the gifts that I don't have within me. What I don't have, hopefully you have. What you don't have, hopefully I have. And we build off of each other um, in, uh, in community. A gift. Community is a gift we, where we, that we can offer others, but also where we learn more about ourselves. And again, back to this thing of it being messy. Sometimes community can cause discomfort. But it is in, but it is in that discomfort that we also grow. It's in that discomfort where we grow closer to God and we find out more about who we are through that sense of being in, uh, of interacting with each other and maybe having some differences of, of, of thoughts um, and opinions. She points out how the, the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is, 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 a, is a great way of being able to visualize, even though sometimes conceptually it's a little bit hard to always understand exactly what the Trinity is. 
she points to the Trinity as being an example of, of community, of how it is that there is an interaction in, a, in, a, in, a, in this circle um, 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 of love and interaction in which there is, um, uh, in, in which there is, in which there's a, there's a profound sense of community. May we live well in our communities. And then she talks about practicing humility, showing love and respect, withholding judgment, practicing patience. May we practice stability by remaining in our community and seeing um, what God would teach us. May we see Christ in the other. I was um, having a conversation with um, a monk. This, this last week I was having a conversation with a monk who's a member of the Society of St. John the Evangelist in Cambridge, which is, is, a, is a group of, of, nun, of, of monks in the, who are, who are Epis, part of the Episcopal Church. And we were talking about how long he'd been in that community, and, and, and he was talking about how they had actually, and actually I had seen a video of, of they had just um, uh, formally put the, the monk's clothing on, on a novice who was taking, taking his initial, initial vows. And we were talking, and he was talking about how there's a period of time where these, these young monks they, 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 that they go through before they take their, their, make their life profession. Because whether or not they are going to really want to be part of the community is, is, is so essential. Um, he, he was talking about how, you know, it, it might look and feel, you know, really good uh, until you really begin to live, spend time in that type of community, but how important it is to make sure that, 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 that that's going to be a fit not only for the novice, but also for the rest of the community, for the, the, the stability of the community, because in that type of setting, but in any setting of community, humility, love and respect, Patience is such an important and, uh, and, and critical thing. All right. Um, thoughts, questions, comments? I just wanted to say thank you because our son went to Priory, or my husband went to Priory, so I know the Benedictine tradition from that, but I've never heard of this woman, so I'm really grateful. Um, I'm surprised. Yeah. Well, well, again, and, and I would just encourage you to to if you she, her her writing is very easy to um, to read, um, and again, this book is one that I highly recommend, um, and, and, and and some of the other components, you know, of it uh, are um, uh, listening, prayer, humility, work giftedness, hospitality, obedience, stability. So she talks about, you know, a variety of things that are part of the rule of Benedict that are so applicable to life just in general, you know. And how, and how, how again, really with the emphasis being on you do not have to live in a monastic setting to be able to identify with and understand this, um, um, uh, the rule of Benedict. And also, again, too, and I just encourage you, there, there are, she, she she speaks somewhere constantly, um, and so there are a lot. There's a lot out there, and and and, and uh, 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 where you'll have a ch where you can have a chance if you're interested to hear uh, more of what she has to say, not only about community but about you know just a variety of a variety of topics. What's the title again? Uh, Wisdom distilled from the daily. Um, I'm glad I'm being introduced to this again after turning 65. Uh, I served at a multi-year sentence in the same correctional facility you mentioned uh, a little bit earlier. Uh, and, and that is, that is why, why we come to pray, and it's because that's when the bell rings. Uh, there was a certain compulsory thing that was going on back then, and I was far too rebellious to appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Still am, actually, in a lot of ways. Uh, but uh, she's very interesting. I've heard parts of some of her things, and I'm, I'm just more open to it now than I was during adolescence. Uh, I, thought, I actually thought that, that the monks from England were sent to subdue the uh, colonials uh, here in the middle of the country, but uh, that's why I 
I traveled elsewhere after after a couple of years of that. But uh, but it's 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 much it makes more sense now, and so that's probably a good thing. So that's all I had to say. Jim. Thank you, Rich. Don't ever change. <laughs> um, I, I related to a little bit of what you said about leaving communities. Uh, many of us are either recently retired or on the verge of retirement, and a big part of that is leaving the community that you, you had uh, very special times with. So it's, it's dawning on me after I've retired, but it's, it's there. And isn't that a nice thing to be able to say that you had some sense of value and appreciation for the community aspect of, 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 of a profession of, in a professional setting? Because that doesn't always that just that, that doesn't always happen, does it? Yeah. I'd like to highly recommend the uh, Society of uh, Saint John uh, the Evangelist. Uh, after you mentioned it several months ago, uh, I went ahead and subscribed to their daily. And it's, it reminds me an awful lot of her, very uh, plain, ordinary speak that guides you to God. And, uh, you know, that video that you saw, I tried to watch it, but I just, it was one of those time issues. Of <laughs> you know how that goes. But uh, I have yet to find any of their daily words that are not very meaningful, but in language that's easy to understand. And I actually, I print them off, and I'm going to have a whole, whole notebook full of them here pretty quick. But, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know why I do that. It's just you want to keep things close that are meaningful, I guess. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it is. But it's very, very good. What Kit is referring to is something that's pushed out by the, um, um, by the monks at the Society of St. John the Evangelist, which goes by SSJE. And it's called, it's a daily... Um, it's not even really a meditation. It's more of like a, literally a sentence or two. And it's called, Brother, Give Us a Word. And if you go on to their, their and I, I, I subscribe to it, and I was actually telling uh, Brother Jonathan that I was talking to you the other day, I said, I'm not saying this just because I'm talking to you and you're one of the monks who pushes these out. But I said, this is, act, I, said I subscribe to a variety of things that I get on a daily basis. And I said, this is the, the thing that I read every day. It is, I find it to be the most helpful, as Kit's saying, the most meaningful. It's succinct. And Kelly and I have talked about it before, too. Um, so if you have any interest in that and, and, and as a way of something that comes out of their community and into you personally, I would just uh, uh, recommend that you go on to their website, and it's very easy to, to subscribe um, to it. SSJE, and they're located, they're located right next to Harvard University in Cambridge. And the other thing I was going to say, too, is that, and, and, and then we, we do have a little bit more time for any other comments. If you have not had an opportunity to... Um, if you don't know that we have monks and nuns in the Episcopal Church, we do. Um, and, 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 and if you have not had, ever had an opportunity to go and just spend some time in a monastery or a convent, I would, I would encourage you to give some thought to doing that. Um, all, 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 most, most, most all of them, certainly all of them in our tradition that I know of, um, have, um, have, are, are always open to, to guests and uh, providing, you know, room and food, and you're, you can go in and worship um, with, the, uh, with the monks and the nuns. Um, there's the Order of the Holy Cross up in New York. There's a group of nuns in um, Augusta, Georgia, who also have a, a place in New York, I believe. So there are several opportunities to do that. I've had an opportunity to spend some time at, um, at, at SSJE, and it, is, it's, it's, it can be a wonderful uh, experience. Um, the last time I went, I took... Uh, my wife, Lisa, who was very reticent about going in, she said, I just don't think I can do that. Um, when I, there's something that in monasteries is called the great silence that happens from a certain point at the end of the day until the next morning where there's nothing. And she said, I don't think I can do that. Well, about two hours into it, she was like, wow, this is, this is wonderful. So um, any, anything else? And happy to, if you ever have an inclination, and some of them are beginning to open back up. Now, if, you have, if you're inclined to want to explore that type of community and to see how that um, works, um, be happy to, to help you get connected and make some recommendations. 
And, you know, with all that, that, that are around here, you don't really have to travel anywhere. You could go to a Roman Catholic uh, monastery or convent and not have to travel to, uh, to Cambridge. Uh, the, where Merton was, is that? Yeah, yeah, the Trappist Monastery in uh, Gethsemane, I think is. I, guess, I think it's called Gethsemane, Kentucky. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that, that where a, a very well-known monk named Thomas Merton um, lived for uh, uh, most of his uh, uh, monastic life. I'm just wondering how you see this ties into the St. Louis community. I mean, um, sure, St. Saint Peter's. Saint yeah, Peter's. yeah. yeah. That, well, that's a good question. What, what I, Annie, what I'm trying, what I was, what I'm trying to do is to, is to help, help us to have some sense of lay, lay a little bit of groundwork for, for those who have had some significant things either to say or, 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 or through their writing about community generally and about what it means to be together in community and how it is that we draw closer to God through community. I have just become aware of during my time here, but also even before I got here, of how we've been displaced some to some degree, you know, over the last two years where people, some people have just not come back to church. Some people have not, we've not been able to come together in community in the ways that we have. So what I'm hopeful is that by hearing about the, 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 the power and the theology of community, so to speak, that that can help inform us as we think about and focus on what it means for us to, to come back together, to re-engage with each other and to connect with each other again here in this community. Does that, does that, does that help? Yeah. Thank you. I know you're already doing that. And then, and then next week we're going to take a look at, uh, at, 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 a, at a community called Thistle Farms, which is based in Nashville. So we're going to take a little bit more of a practical approach to show how community has been created in a, in, with, with, with a group of women who are survivors of human trafficking and who were victims of, of and who were part of, pr of prostitution. And how an, an Episcopal priest named... Um, Becca Stevens has created a community called Thistle Farms that's really remarkable. Um, but just as another way of showing how people can come together in community and really do some, some wonderful and amazing things. So. 9.30. <laughs> Thank you all. God bless. <laughs>